Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Uh, today's topic is going to be about how to speak your truth. Uh, as always, we're going to start with a, a meditation, and we're going to do a simple meditation. Those of you who've never been with me before, uh, and it's your first time, I'd like to welcome you. Also, uh, would like to let you know that what we're going to do is I have to mute everybody because devices uh, make funny noises, and uh, so you're muted. Um, you can, uh, if you have a question, you can write on the chat box or wave at me later on, and I, I will unmute you, and you can ask me your question. Uh, but just in the beginning, we're going to do this uh, meditation. It won't be long. We're just going to get centered. What I'm, gonna, what I'm asking you to do is simply, very simple, without any effort. So it's a non-effort type of meditation that you don't have to try to meditate. It's simply shift of your attention. You bring your attention from the other uh, objects, including your thoughts, including your emotions. Those are still not you. They're outside of you. So you're simply bringing your attention from paying attention to what you're thinking. You're shifting your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts. What's there before you think? What happens? Before a thought comes, what's there? So you switch your attention and you go inwards. You follow the, the uh, thread of the thoughts and you keep following going inwards. And all of a sudden, you arrive at the place that there is no thoughts. It's absolutely silent. So, it's very simple. You don't, if you are trying to meditate, then something's wrong. It must be effortless. So, simply shift your attention inwards and follow trace your thoughts back to their origin and you arrive into silence all of a sudden everything becomes quiet and there are no thoughts any longer because you have gone beyond the thoughts so dive back inside take a deep breath And I want you to tell yourself, all is well. All is well. Just come to this place within yourself where it's quiet, it's still, there's no movements. You're in the center of yourself. You're not involved with thoughts. You're not involved with a story because all thoughts are coming from a story that you carry. So go beyond the story. Whatever is the story, go beyond that. Dive into silence. Dive into silence. 
and all of a sudden everything will become quiet. All is well. When you dive into your own silence, you go into deep within yourself, you realize that there is nothing going on and it's quiet.
without putting an effort, without forcing yourself. You simply discover this place within yourself which is quiet. It's absolutely silent. A place that nothing is going on. Okay. So we can see when we shift our awareness, our attention, it's like, where does your attention go? If your attention is on your mind and you're focusing on what is going on in your head, then that becomes a reality and that creates suffering because you believe what you're thinking is who you are. Your thoughts become real. Now this is different because people try to teach you to think positive. I'm not teaching that. It's not about positive thinking or negative thinking. It's about thinking. When you're thinking and you're identified with your thoughts, then you get into trouble because you think, you believe that it's you. But you are not your thoughts. You're simply observing the thoughts. You're hearing the thoughts, but you're not your thoughts. Your thoughts are different than who you are. There's a big difference. Thoughts, the mind will think. There's no doubt about it. You can't do anything about your mind. You cannot make it stop thinking because you're using your mind not to think. That doesn't work. So the mind is going to be doing its thing. The key is to recognize this is the realization that you are not your thinking mind. What you're thinking is not who you are. You're simply observing your thoughts. You're hearing your thoughts. You're the witness of your thoughts. But you're not what you're thinking. So there are times I tell myself what I'm thinking about, what is going on in my mind is really none of my business. What you're thinking in your head has nothing to do with you. It's really not your business. Because your mind is going to do whatever it wants to do. It will go to all kinds of places. So, you simply take your attention away. You cannot stop the mind from thinking, but you can take your attention away from the mind. So, now, we can get into that more in details. Same thing is your emotions. Your emotions come and go. You get emotional, you get angry, you get sad, you get melancholy, you get depressed, you get happy, you get excited, you get turned on sexually. Uh, all kinds of different things happen. These emotions rise inside you. But you are not your emotions either. You are the witness of your emotions. You're simply aware of your emotions. But no one has taught us in childhood or in our education to separate ourselves from our emotions and our thoughts and our body. We have not gone through the training of separating ourselves and witnessing these three elements. The body, the thoughts, 
and the emotions. So we go through a life, an entire life, of really believing that we are these three elements. Therefore we suffer. And we, are, we could be manipulated easily by these three elements. But once you come to realization that you're not the three elements, you're not your body, you're not your thoughts, and you're not your emotions, you're that which is observing them. Okay? So here's the observer, and here's the body, the thoughts, and the emotion. So you're the observer. You're watching the three. And you're reporting this. You're reporting it to yourself. So once you realize that you're here and these are three things are objects, then you can bring your attention to yourself instead of putting your attention on these three. As you shift your attention to yourself, things become quiet and the quality of your life changes. The quality of your life starts to change. You don't have to change anything in the outside world. Forget about the outside world. That's a waste of your time, trying to fix the outside world, trying to worry about the outside world, trying to justify and f fix things. It's a waste of your time. Nothing's going to happen. You're only going to suffer. The problem is that our attention is on the wrong place. It's on the wrong part. So, now talking about the truth, speaking our truth, and this is something we all suffered from speaking the truth. And it depends on which culture, what country uh, you grew up, uh, whether you grew up in a religious uh, environment, um, it all depends on when, wh what is your background and what is your conditioning, how you're being conditioned. But generally, uh, most of us, we are being programmed and being suppressed by our parents, our schooling, our society, uh, the government, and we're repressed not to speak our truth and just be a good boy or be a good girl. And we're bound by these um, different um, elements that we suppress ourselves and we don't speak the truth and as well as uh, some of us don't like conf confrontation. We're not into confrontation. So if you speak your truth, you're going to have to get into some kind of alteration and, um, and that's uncomfortable, especially if you're kind of a person who's not angry. So uh, people who are angry are different. They're, they want to get into confrontation and they, you know, you can feel it with them. They're like, they're expressing things, but it's coming from a place of anger. It's not coming from a place of silence or love. Um, for them, it's much easier to express or say the truth. But for those of us who kind of grew up in a very loving environment, uh, very relaxed and you don't you're not you're not really angry um, then when it comes to speaking your truth a lot of us have a hard time doing that uh, because of uh, the way we have been suppressed and the way we have been educated not to say anything and to keep this to ourselves because of not creating any kind of confrontation so I find it generally easier if you're from the Western world and you grew up in a Western uh, culture 
in comparison if you grew up in an Eastern culture so you're coming from Middle East or you're coming from Asian countries uh, Oriental countries or even South America probably because they have similar culture to Asia uh, the, so people coming from those cultures are much more repressed in speaking the truth because that's a part of the deal um, now between men and women I noticed like there's been thousands of years of repression uh, on women and it's only been lately in past probably 20 years 30 years that women speak their truth uh, they're claiming the rights and things are shifting changing um, in for the better as far as speaking your truth so but there has been thousands of years of repression so I'm gonna get into this and explain these things for you more in details so far anybody has any questions or any comments you can either write on the chat box or uh, wave at me and I'll unmute you. Okay. Nothing at the moment. Cool. Oh, yeah. Hi, Eva. I wonder what is truth and whose truth are you talking about? So that's a little bit of a loaded question. Um, <clears throat> what we're talking about uh, speaking our truth. So uh, let's put it this way. For example, let's say that um, are you single? Are you married? I have been. You have been married. Do you have children? Yes. You do. Okay. All right. How many children do you have? Two. Do you have the equal relationship with, with both of them? About the same. Yeah. Does ever any, any of them bother you or say something or do something that disturbs you? Not really. Not really. Oh, okay. What about your ex? What, uh, is he around? Is he alive or? He... He's alive and we are very good friends nowadays. Right. And okay. And so it came. I found this on the web for around. Is he alive? So it did come to a point that you separated, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you, was it your idea or his idea or both my, of you? My, my. Your, your idea. So, so what made you want to separate? I was unhappy. Right. So did you tell him that? Yes. Okay. So you said your truth. Yes, I did. Right. So when I'm talking about the truth in this particular settings today, is that's what I'm talking about. Okay. How right. is it for me? Right. Your, your truth that you're not happy any longer in this marriage uh, union and you know, you put up with it, you do, you do whatever you can to make it work naturally. For most people, that's the case. Because um, you have children together, you live together, you have common property together, maybe common animals together, whatever. And then it comes to a point that you just, your soul is dying. You feel like you're really you're not flourishing, you're not really doing what you really want to do, and also there's no more juice in the relationship, and it's not happening. That joy, that fun, that spark, uh, it's gone, and things are very monotone, they're boring, you're not feeling alive, you just feel like a robot, and you're going through the motions, and you're just doing things to be a good wife or whatever, but inside you something's dying. And then you bring it out, and as uncomfortable as it is, 
but you have to share this with your husband. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. So, and when you want to share such a truth with your husband or your partner, uh, wife, whomever, then there is moments that um, it's scary before you speak your truth. Um, you're, you're worried. There is fear or concerns that how is this other person going to react to me? How are they going to take it? Are they going to get hurt? So we're hesitant about it. Am I, am I right? Okay. So far, are we on the same page? Yes. Right. So you have to take a deep breath and, and build up your courage before you tell your, your ex-husband that this is not happening anymore. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not of those people who are afraid of con confrontations, so it was not so deep this, but I was not he heard, so there was nothing to do. Right. You weren't heard. Yes. Right. Okay. And that's the case for a lot of us. But anyway, you spoke your truth and then you went through your separation. Yes. Right. So, and that's the case. The, what about, uh, this is, you know, in general, I'm just asking everybody. Well, thank you for sharing, uh, Eva. I appreciate it. Uh, what about the time, let's say you have a good friend and you really care about your friend, but your friend starting to have bad breath and something's wrong with their teeth and they're having bad breath and you, you're hanging out together and your friend kind of likes to get close to you, talking to you and you're smelling the bad breath and, um, you're just wondering, how am I going to tell my friend this? Or what if you're starting to date somebody and uh, they have bad breath, but you really like the person, you like their character, you like the way they look, you like the way they carry themselves, but there's this one problem. And how, are you, how do you say that? I mean, that's your truth. You have to speak your truth to them. Because unless this problem is corrected, you won't be able to be close to them. You, especially if you're intimate with them. So that is, uh, then it becomes a concern of how am I going to speak my truth? Anybody has ever experienced something like that? Yeah, right. So... It's an uncomfortable situation, isn't it? Let me see. Hi, Stephanie. Stephanie, I'm trying to unmute you. Oh, yeah. Hello. I got you. Yeah, hi, Hello. Stephanie. Welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Likewise. Uh, yes. Um, I find my personality is I can take care of everyone else, so I don't have a hard time mentioning a, a health concern it's when it comes to me i neglect myself right right and uh that's very common a lot of us do mm -hmm. that yes so, yeah and so that's one thing but let's hold this here let's put this here i'm going to come back to this one and what about you're with a friend and you love this person and or it's your mom or it's your dad or your brother or somebody that you're close to and you're having you're eating and they have a habit they're eating and they're talking and sometimes particles of food flies out out of their mouth have you ever been in that situation with somebody you care for yeah and that's a very uncomfortable situation too. I mean, either you have to tolerate it, that whenever 
you're, they're talking, they're chewing, they're eating food, and they're anxious to tell you a story and particle of food goes out. So, what do you do? That's an uncomfortable situation, isn't it? That now you have to speak your truth. Monica, you, ra you rose your hand. Let me, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm trying to unmute you. Mute myself. Yeah. Hi. 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 So you've had that situation happen? Yes. <laughs> so what What did you do? I tried to uh, to not say anything about it, but I tried to find another way to say it. So did you succeed? Yes, <laughs> I did. Oh. So what did you do? How did you say it? I did don't you? remember how I, I did it. Right. I often do uh, that when I have, a, uh, you, you call it a white uh, lie. White lie. Yes. Uh, right. And I, I try to get around it. And sometimes I'm lucky to do it and sometimes I'm not. Right. Exactly. I get it. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Anybody wants to? Yeah, Rosalie? I wonder why, why people trust more a liar than they trust you when you say the truth. They, don't, they will listen to you when you lie. That's okay, and they get it. But if you tell the truth, that's the way to lose a friend. Yeah. Well, generally is that it gets very uncomfortable when you have to speak your truth to somebody. And a big part of it is the fear of being rejected. So we're carrying this fear of not being loved and not being accepted. And again, this goes back into our conditioning. But the fear of not, not being accepted, being rejected, and the fear of confrontation, that there may be some kind of confrontation here. And that holds us back. So, for example, I come from a culture that uh, as I was growing up, there was a lot of do's and don't do's. And there was a lot of don't say this and don't say that. Like, okay, Zarathustra, um, when you're an elder walks into the room, the younger people have to get up. They have to stand up as a, as a form of respect to an elder person. And if you don't do that, that's bad, okay? Um, when uh, something's wrong and you don't like it, uh, you're not supposed to say it, say that. Or if some food is being offered to you, you don't like the food, you're supposed to eat it and not say you don't like it. So a lot of these things coming from our upbringing and our culture is cultural. So, uh, some of the things coming from fear, when we don't speak our truth. But what happens when you speak your truth? When you finally tell, tell somebody, whether it's time for a separation. So let's say you want to separate and it's not happening. You're in a marriage union or a relationship or whatever is the story. It doesn't matter. The story does not really matter. But... You're in this situation that you have to speak your truth. Now, there is different things can happen. Some people, you, and you may be close to them, but they emotionally haven't matured yet. There are people that you do come across in this life that they may be 40 years old, they may be 50 years old, 
30, 40, 50, 60, whatever. And when you do confront an issue with them, their reaction is they shut you down and they cut you off completely from their lives. Uh, and I've noticed that they may be stuck at age five, six, seven, and so you may be dealing with this person, this man, this woman who's 50 years old, maybe even older, has got gray hair. But inside, emotionally, there is a five-year-old, six-year-old child. And the way they're used to relate with the world is when you say something to them they don't like, okay, you criticize, because if you're in a relationship with anyone, any kind of relationship, there has to be room for criticism. There has to be a room for disagreement. There has to be a room for argument in a relationship. There has to be space for it. You know, and you can criticize someone depending how you criticize. But if you want to have a healthy relationship, you have to allow the other person, whether it's a friendship or relationship, whatever that is, that they can express what they feel about you. Uh, even if that expression comes as criticism. Now, it depends how you criticize. You can do it lovingly, but there has to be space. There has to be room for it. If there is no room for it, then growth cannot happen. You cannot evolve and go to the next level in your relationship because there is no room for criticism or there is no room for disagreement. I cannot disagree with you. Because the moment I disagree with you, the other person goes back to their emotional self of five or six years old and they throw a tantrum. They become like a child and they get angry, they get upset, they shut the door, they walk away, they won't listen to you. So now there is no room for growth or disagreement. You don't disagree, or you need to tell them about a habit they have. There, there is something they do that really bothers you, and you want to share that with them. So sometimes you're dealing with somebody like that. Other times, in my experience, is when I uh, criticize somebody, or I disagree with them, or I tell them my truth about how I feel about it, I've noticed Either I go in a deeper relationship with this person. So we go, uh, in the beginning there could be an initial reaction by them. But then I've noticed that later on we really appreciate each other and our, we really bond with each other and we go deeper in this relationship with one another because I spoke my truth to them they heard my truth. Initially, maybe they reacted to it, but a day or two after, they come back and they tell me, you're right, or I appreciate you telling me what you told me. So then we're going into a deeper level. That's one scenario. Another scenario is, as I said, they may just shut down completely to you and they cut you off. And then... If that's the case, then that relationship is really, it's better it ends now, wherever you're at, because you have no room for growth. You can't go anywhere with it. But when there is room for growth, you, you, get, you go deeper with that person. And there is a deeper sense of appreciation for speaking your truth. Because now you got over a hump. 
and you had to say what you had to say, whatever that is, you know, maybe there's a behavior, there's an unconscious behavior that you're having. I mean, I've had my friends telling me about some of my unconscious behavior, that I'm doing something they don't like, and I'm not even aware of it, or I'm saying something they don't, they don't like to hear it all the time, and sometimes, you know, I've experienced why they're avoiding me or, or, or don't want to hang out with me, and then I had to reach out to my friends and find out what is the problem, why are you ignoring me? And then finally they had said what the problem is, and I understood it. It was like, oh wow, I had no idea that this is what I do, or what I say. So this is where self-awareness comes in, that you're open to look at yourself, and, and examine yourself about an unconscious behavior that you have. And obviously your unconscious behavior is not serving you. And it's creating separation between you and the people you love. And they don't want to hang out with you. So you have to look into it. Just one second, I've got to close this window. One moment. Okay. Sorry. How about if you have gone to a mechanic uh, or you have gone somewhere, you bought something, and that thing, or you paid for, you know, they fix your car, but they didn't fix it right. Or you took your clothing to the dry cleaner, and they didn't do a good job. You bought something that's not really right, and you have to return this thing. And sometimes there's this little bit of a weird feeling that you have to return something or you have to go back to your mechanic and tell them like they didn't do a good job, uh, they didn't really fix the car right, or did, you know, the, there's a lot of moments like that in life that you have to return something and now you have to tell your truth or they've done some work for you, it hasn't done right and you have to really tell them. How many times in your life you've been in that situation that you feel a little bit weird to to tell your truth? Anybody? Hilda? Yeah. You know, when you meet people and sometimes they don't listen to you or whatever, so you have to just tell what you feel about it. Yeah, you have to tell what you feel. What about when you're these days especially, you are talking, people ask you a question, maybe it's a friend of yours or whatever, okay Zaratustra, how was your trip? Or, um, oh you just come back from Europe, how, how was your trip? And you start just saying about your trip and they're not listening to you, they already turn around and do something else. How's that? That's kind of annoying, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is. And you know, sometimes I feel that people are they're just sitting there thinking about their, their next question instead of listening to what I'm telling. Yeah. I, you know, I notice myself, and I've been working on that in past few years, is I notice when I meet somebody, so let's say I meet someone and I say, I'm Zaratustra, nice meeting you, and they're telling me their name. And in the past, I wasn't present. I'm thinking about my next question, asking another question from them. I'm not listening to their name. It still sometimes happens these days. I really have to pay attention. When I meet somebody and they tell me, you know, hi, I'm Zaratustra, hi, I'm John, and we're, I have to be really present in that moment to really listen to their name and record it in my mind. So 10 minutes after, I don't have to ask them their name again because I didn't listen to it the first time. I've noticed that. 
So I have to consciously bring myself to this place of paying attention, listening to someone's name, or really being present and listening to their story if they're telling me a story. What about meeting somebody that they talk a lot and they want your attention? How about when you meet someone and they really want your attention and they keep talking, talking, talking all the time and what happens is after half an hour you start feeling really drained or really get tired. Do you confront that or you have to tell them the truth, anybody? Yes, no, okay. Uh, Breda, hi. I'm try. I, yeah, okay. hi. Yeah. Can you hi. Hear you? Yes, I um, can hear you. I, I tend to, unfortunately, I tend to, if they go on and on and on, I tend to see the glaze, you know, my eyes get, I'm sure, look a bit more glazed and I begin to tune them out and I try to um, maybe redirect the conversation, uh, you know, by inserting something or commenting obviously on, on where they started off but either asking a new question or giving my view of it, or I, I can't, maybe I, I, I find it difficult to be so present that I'm going to listen to 20 minutes or 25 of somebody going on and on and on because I don't think I'm serving them. Right. They're on right. an ego trip and I'm on an exhaust trip and we're not communicating. <laughs> no, so why continue? <laughs> right. And right. of course, it's it, unless you know the person very well, and they can accept that. Um, you, you know, I may not be successful, but I, I don't need to be successful. I don't need to be used or abused. Right. It, it, we both right. should be conscious if we're in a conversation. Right. Or if so what do you? So my question is that let's say you come across someone like that, and 20 minutes after, what do you do? Half an well, hour after, do you do you tell them that what is going on, or you just walk away, or change the conversation? It would depend on how well I knew them. I don't feel the necessity to convert, if I want to use that word, everyone to a higher consciousness, if that's a fancy way of putting it. I don't think it's my business. I mean, if, if it's like a, an immediate, a, a child uh, within the family or a partner, husband or wife, then yes, an intervention at some point or other, gently and lovingly uh, inserted, uh, obviously, it, it's the responsible thing to do. But if it's not, and it's just like a girlfriend or other, and they're going on and on, or an acquaintance or whatever, I, I feel... I'll hurry along, I, I'll try and extricate myself from the conversation or conclude it or move on or I need to do so and so or lovely seeing you when we'll meet again or say something polite and move on and right. move out. Right. Don't, don't, don't feed it in other words, there's no point, I don't feel the need to convert them but I don't feel the need to feed them either and, and, and to exhaust myself in the efforts. I agree with you, thank you, appreciate it. I, I agree with you 100%. It's a, um, it's a tough situation, but we all get challenged by this every day. And uh, everybody, everybody gets to experience, experience it. Uh, let me tell you something. You know, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, it depends on the mood I'm in and where I'm at and how strong I feel in my body that day. Um, a, a lot of times uh, I come across people that they're really passionate and they're really like there's this force behind them of whatever is the story and they really want to convince me or whatever that is. And sometimes I was, I'm like, okay, uh, 
probably not ever going to see this person again or I'm going to uh, maybe see him once or twice a year here and there or whatever and just like what uh, Breda just mentioned which is it's not my business to convert him um, I don't care and I don't have the energy to uh, speak, speak my truth maybe telling him my truth is you talk too much or you talk nonsense but I'm thinking to myself okay I'll just you know maybe I hang out here for five ten minutes or whatever and then I'm never gonna see this person I don't have to deal with them so uh, forget it I, I don't want to get into any kind of because if I start saying something now I get into I get involved in this story with them for a long time and you just kind of weigh it to see what you know which which side you know okay if I get into a big confrontational thing that's gonna exhaust me and I'm gonna put a lot of time and energy and I don't really care about this person or I don't really care to see him again or whatever so it's not worth my time and you move on uh, some other people that you're invested in of course you you're in connection you're in contact with them on a regular basis so and if they're doing something that's making you uncomfortable this is where you really need to speak your truth depending to what level they're they're listening to you sometimes you're dealing with your mom or dad or grandma someone close to you you love them um, and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how many times you tell them they're doing something you don't like they just don't listen or they're too old to change uh, too set on their way and I have that with my own family and I'm like okay whatever you know I, I'll eat it so uh, because it, it just nonsense I just can put a lot of time and energy into it saying no or whatever and it won't go anywhere so I just give in to that um, there's a lot of different situations uh, for example I have a girlfriend uh, she is very much into confrontation and to a point that I don't want to call her I don't want to see her I don't want to hang out with her uh, she doesn't live here in LA she lives in another town but every time I see her and we hang out together uh, later she sends me a message that I said something or I did something she didn't like and then she wants us to have a clearing together uh, anyway she's on a far exaggerated end of this thing and then we have to have a clearing about whatever it was and that takes a lot of my energy too and I don't feel like dealing with it um, so there is different it, this is there's in my opinion there's not one formula that that you're going to apply this formula to every situation in life because that's not how life is life has a lot of varieties and different situations and the way I discover it and this may not even be the right way okay because I don't claim that I know everything there's a lot of things I don't know a lot of things that I do encounter in my life that I don't know what to do I don't know what to say you know in this situation because I've never been in that situation before uh, so I don't claim that I know everything but I can only speak uh, of myself generally I'm not very confrontational uh, I try to kind of slip around it and as much as I can but life puts me in a situation at times that I have to speak my truth and uh, I learned that I've learned that uh, there's sometimes if I don't really speak my truth 
then I beat myself up or I feel really bad about it later. And uh, you just have to say it. There's sometimes you learn to do your time and energy management. And like Breda mentioned, so there, there are situations and times that if you really want to speak your truth, you're going to get yourself engaged into this argument with this person that a five, ten minute encounter can turn to a three hour uh, ordeal and it wastes your time. And it's simply you're not invested enough in that person to put that kind of time because you don't care. You really don't give a damn. So you eat it and you walk away and you save yourself a lot of time. So in general, I would have to say I don't have one formula that fits all, but the idea is to remain truthful to ourselves and speak our truth. Now, um, a lot of people that I've been I have coached and uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis that I work with so I got to get intimate with them and to find out about their lives uh, with women especially women uh, as I mentioned earlier historically women have, have been suppressed for thousands of years so it's kind of gone this suppression has kind of leaked into our DNA It's kind of leaked into our psyche and so many women they don't really speak their truth especially in the encountering their dad and their dad's been kind of or the parents and I'm not just saying with women of course this is for all of us but uh, I have my experience has been it's with uh, girls women mostly more than men uh, because you know you got this authority figure is kind of banging in your head and you're six seven eight nine years old you come to your mommy or daddy and you're really expressing something you're really excited about something and then daddy is kind of like going like this like shut up or sit down and you're not to express your opinion you're a kid so you're a kid you're stupid and you're not supposed to um, express your thoughts and they suppress you and of course we're looking at that as an authority figure is big strong He's the man, he's not sensitive, you know, in comparison to women, women are more sensitive. So, and he represses you. And a lot of the girls gone through this issue that they were repressed by their father and they weren't able to tell the truth. And then years after, I mean, I'm working with them when they're in their 50s or 60s or 40s or whatever and now we talk about it and they have to now go to their dad and tell the truth about all these years that they've been repressed so that's something we all want to look at uh, and it's just not like with your dad that is with your kids you know let's say one of your kids manipulating you or bullying you and putting you down or outsmarting you and it's bothering you or your partner is doing it and you really have to speak your truth. There are other times that you have to eat it um, is that politically, strategically is not in your benefit. I don't know, maybe you're depending on someone, maybe you're living in someone's home or um, somehow your business, your work is, your whatever you do is tied up to somebody else. And, you know, there are things about them you don't like. And if you tell that, if you speak the truth, they'll kick you out. 
you have to leave their home or whatever is the situation. So there are times that you have to be smart and you can't really speak your truth. So it's not one formula that applies to everything, but in general, generally, my experience has been that the more I really speak my truth, the more I really walk my own truth, the freer I feel. But you can't always apply this formula to every situation in life. Any comments? Anybody has anything to say? No? Okay. Oh, there you are. Stephanie? Yes, Hi. I... Hi, I just wanted to say I'm in total agreement with everything you've said. It depends on the situation. Um, sometimes I do feel handcuffed and I cannot speak my truth. And um, sometimes having those difficult conversations just don't work. And I find, for example, with my mother that I've been my whole life wanting to connect with her and we love each other deeply but she's not going to change because she will not uh, she hasn't done her own personal work like I have um, right. uh, for example we do have some we have medical physical gifts <laughs> sorry metaphysical gifts that run in the family uh, because of her Catholic upbringing um, she has chosen not to develop her gifts where I have embraced mine. mine. And some, sometimes she calls me the devil, and other times she wants to sit next to me and hold my hand so right. that I can do some healing with her. Right. Um, and I set aside the, all the other uh, upbringing um, dysfunctions that came along with that. I love her unconditionally, right. and she's not going to change. And for right. my heart health, I've let a lot of things go. Um, she is who she is, but she loves me. May not be the healthiest love, but that's what she has to offer me. Same with my father. Um, right. And I, uh, yeah. I love I, them both. Yeah, I get it. I... Uh... I deal with the same situation. My dad's not alive anymore, but when he was alive, and my mom who's alive, thank God. And it doesn't matter how many times I say something, they, they're they not, they just don't hear it. And it's not going to change them. Uh, it's too late. I mean, unless something happened with divine intervention, maybe change happens for them. But I'm not able to do that. So I just let it go and I eat it. But then, you know, for me is when that happens, so then I need to look at myself. Everything is always for me is like number one is I need to look at myself. That's how I live my life. Okay, so I'm, I get into this situation with someone. There needs to be some kind of alteration. And I feel like they're doing or they're saying something I don't like or it bothers me. Um, I always take a look inside first to see what is it I don't want to look at. What is it that bothers me? Is, that, is it coming from myself? that I'm encountering this person to mirror me and reflect this issue back at myself. And if I can't find anything, then, then the next thing is, okay, God, existence is challenging me to show my 
patience. I need to, to chill and stay in my center. And because the mind comes, and the mind comes and, you know, someone is saying something that you don't agree with. Uh, to you, it's completely bullshit. It's completely off. And your mind comes and very strongly and you want to defend this idea you have or whatever it is. And for me, is there's sometimes like, okay, what, where is this coming from? Is this coming from a place that my ego and I need to prove to someone that I'm right? Or I can just let that go and it doesn't matter. So we come back to this thing is that dealing with this issue when speaking about your truth is you can look at it from a lot of different angles and there is many different things you you are to learn one is really speaking your truth second is not speaking your truth and not get into a lengthy conversation or confrontation c is is there something i need to look within myself uh D is, can I exercise being silent and not take it as a way that I'm a coward, I don't have the guts to speak my truth, but can I just be indifferent to it? Can I come to this place? Or this is a practice, is this like I'm doing this to cop out? Am I just not saying anything because I don't have the guts and the courage to stand up? Or I'm just not doing it because I don't feel like getting into a com confrontation? There's a lot of different layers into it. And you're the only one who knows. You're the only person who knows where you're at. Because again, there's not... It's like when people say, and I need to do a podcast about it, is people say, uh, be honest. How can you be honest? That's bullshit. You can never be 100% honest and tell everything to everybody. Anything they ask you. As um, Monica mentioned earlier, she brought up the word white lies. You know, what, how can you be honest all the time? You have to be very stupid to be honest all the time. That's not a sign of being smart. That's a sign of stupidity. Because if you're honest all the time, you probably won't live very long or you, you cannot make it. of being honest 100% all the time. I don't know of once one person in my life that is honest 100% all the time. Not even a person. No one. Now, you can be honest to yourself 100%. That's a different story. Being honest to yourself 100%, that's part of your responsibility. That is your only responsibility you have in this life. But you don't have a responsibility to be honest 100% to other people. Because it's almost impossible. And I'm going to use an example. Like, it was like a few months ago, my mother comes to me and she went and did her hair. So they cut her hair shorter and, and they dyed her hair and everything. But it didn't look good. It didn't really look good. She looked much better without it. And she comes to me and says, Zaratustra, how do you like my hair? She's smiling. She's glowing. She's very happy. And I'm not going to tell her, Mom, you look like shit. I'm telling her, I see her and I'm a little bit shocked. And I say, oh yeah, Mom, you look great. You look, you look great. I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't have it inside me. I can't break her heart. She's over 90 years old. I'm not going to tell her you look like shit. 
Because it doesn't matter. What difference would it make? Because I, I'm not here to prove that, oh, every time I speak, I only speak my truth. Well, it is. Every time I speak, I speak my truth. My, my truth in that moment is not telling her what I feel. That was my truth. So I stayed truthful to myself, but I lied to her because I didn't want to break her heart. It was more important to me to lie to her than breaking her heart. If I told her you look like shit, I would have broken her heart. And I didn't want to do that. So I lied. How about those of you who have kids? Do you always tell the truth to your kids? If you have children, you get used to lying. There are times you want to put him to bed. There are times you don't want to take him somewhere. What if, what if you get cancer and you may die? Are you going to tell your seven and nine-year-old kids that I got cancer and I'm going to die? And you're going for a surgery? You're not going to tell them I'm going to die. You just come, come up with some kind of story because you may not die. You go through your surgery and you'll come out. But a lot of times, certain things, you know, you can't tell kids. I'm, but don't take me wrong. I don't want you to come back and tell me, well, you told us to lie to your kids. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you can't tell them everything. They're not ready to hear it. They're not mature to hear it. So you're just going to have to twist it or put it differently. Those of you who... How many people here had kids? Okay. All right. Do you always tell them 100% truth? No. You can't. So... Everything... It's God, you have to check in with yourself and see where you're at with it. Especially the more conscious you become, the more aware you become, you look in here. You check in with yourself to see if it's, it's okay or it's not okay. Am I alright with this? And maybe you were alright with that kind of a behavior for years. But you're not all right with it anymore. Then you make adjustments. But one recommendation I make is no, whatever challenging situation I encounter is uh, I highly recommend you always look at yourself first because we have been trained and brainwashed to put your finger on other people and put our finger on government, put our finger on the city, on the uh, environment, on education, whatever it is. We're putting our finger on other people. And this is wrong, that is wrong, da 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 da. So, but what I've learned is always look at myself. Always look at myself. What is it that I'm not doing right? What is it needs to change? What is it that I'm not looking at? I'm not paying attention to? What kind of unconscious behavior do I have that this situation keeps reoccurring? And I need to check it out. So um, that's where you want to start with. And not in a very analytical way, not in a way that you beat yourself up. No, just in a cool way. Just take a look and do a diagnostic check of yourself 
Is there something I'm not looking at? Is there something I'm not paying attention to? Is there something I need to learn? And then you see if there is or not, if you're really honest with yourself. And then you, then you can bring your attention on the other person and, and see what is it you don't like that you need to share with them. Is there anything anybody wants to share? You have a question or comment you want to make? Hi. Um, I would just like to add it's, it's, it's not that important in and of itself, but we're moving into um, the political situation for the next three months uh, or whatever. So we're all going to get bombarded morning, noon and night. And, you know, within our family, we have different views and neighbors and friends and everything else and which program on the TV we'll watch because of this slanted or the other slanted. I know it's not as important as um, perhaps a, a relationship with Vin, you know, has, within the family or something with kids, but I mean we're all going to be exposed to it. So it's a great playground to practice in for all the good points you have made, you know, to remain like the observer, as it were, the witness observer in our own consciousness and listen to if it's an opposing view or even if it's the same, you know, it's a lot of chatter, a lot of wasted energy. It'll be what it'll be. And, um, and life goes on with pluses and minuses, no matter who goes in or who wins the election, there's always pluses and minuses. So it's a good right. place for us perhaps just to practice you know, just remaining and not either not getting very involved or just saying a few cogent points and moving on or whatever. Not getting into the big energy of it is that's the only point I want to make. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, whether it's, yeah, if it's that kind of politics you're referring to, whether it's COVID-19, I mean, yes. this yeah. whole thing has also created a lot of separation and a lot of disagreements in the families because uh, there are people who are taking it very seriously and or they're really freaked out about it of and there are people who are very easy going with it and that creates divisions in the family uh, or you having or people having ideas about election i don't know which election you're referring to i'm assuming you're you're referring to the u.s election yes yes uh, right so where where do you live where are you from um i i i am irish but i live in northern california okay in, where where in northern california um, in the greater sacramento area okay all right so yeah and uh <clears throat> You know, we all learn hard lessons because as careful as I am not to get involved into these kind of conversations, especially with the strangers, forget it. I, I, don't, I don't say a word. But then with family that you're very close with and you see them two, three nights a week and uh, conversations like that comes up, and there are times that I'm like, I literally have to stop myself and not say anything. Just keep my mouth shut. 
uh, because if I open my mouth, I get myself into trouble. And I've done that. And uh, I've noticed to some points, nothing good comes out of it. That's been my experience. Is I, I'm not recommending this to anybody because you have to do what you have to do. But I've learned to keep my mouth shut. The more I keep my mouth shut, the better it is. So, um, and then I, you know, I go and do my own thing, whatever my thing is. But I don't need to. Uh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work trying to convince um, somebody else within the family. I mean, this uh, about. Uh, political ideas or which way is the right way or da, da 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 they have to go through what they have to go through they need to learn uh and if because the thing is okay here is i have to look at myself always but in my case i also look at it as very very different than other people in the world uh it's a very rare case and that comes to um, literally not having much interest or not getting involved with the world's affairs. So I look at it, no matter what the situation is, whether it's COVID-19 or it's the U.S. presidency or whatever the story is, or it's mandatory vaccination, whatever is the scenario. And... I either agree with it or I disagree with it. I may find it bullshit or it's valid. I may just view it like it's all lies and it doesn't exist. Or I may really buy, buy it and say it's really true. So, but the bottom line is for me, I'm not, my involvement with world affairs are very, 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 very low. Uh, I don't give it any energy because I don't view the world as real. But I always have to remind myself how many people think or look at things that way. And that is a very, very, very minimum. So what am I trying to do? Trying to get involved into a conversation um, that this whole thing is bullshit. Uh, <laughs> To, <laughs> to with someone who is very involved and very much uh, believes that the world is real. So that's kind of absurd and that's kind of a stupid thing to do on my behalf to get involved into that. So the best is for me to keep my mouth shut. But that's a formula for me. I'm not recommending it to anybody else. You have to do what you have to do. But for me, I realize there's nothing good comes out of it. Uh, I would say the with the forget the politics with the COVID. It's a little more serious because within families, you know, we are talking about health and risks and masks or not masks yes. or yes. going out or mixing or visiting family or not right. family, not wanting them there. It's a little closer to, I mean, the politics is sure, who cares? Yeah, because you, you may die or somebody close yeah. to you may die from the virus. And it's so, hard to sort out those if people are yeah. different opinions within the exactly. family. Exactly, exactly. I agree with you 100%. So... Again, I prefer keep my mouth shut. And uh, but you know, there's you know there's something interesting. I go on this trip with two of my very close friends. Uh, I have to remind myself because I forget that I've had five near death experiences. So my view of death is completely different because I'm not afraid of it anymore. Um, I don't care. It's, it's, it's doesn't even, I don't entertain the thought of death 
uh, because I welcome it. I, you know, I'm like, oh wow, when it comes, I'm really looking forward to this transition because I'm really, really curious to know how, really, like a little child, really curious that I really want to know when I die, how this thing is going to happen and I want to be fully conscious of it. But that's so far different than anyone else. So I have to remind myself, like Zarathustra, not everybody feels or thinks the way you do because you had five near-death experiences. You have come very close and kissing the lips of death. And so naturally something has snapped inside you. Something has shifted inside you. And you deal with it very casually. And I had to see it because I'm traveling in this motor home, in this RV with two of my close friends. And we're in a couple of life and death situations. Like when the brakes went out on the RV on this hill. And, you know, I managed to pull. There was no moment in my life that I thought we're going to die. I had a very strong, deep uh, faith and trust that everything was going to work out perfectly and it did but my two friends were freaked out I mean not in a moment but later on and I had to just it reminded me like wow how far when it comes to the subject of trusting life or death how far I have separated myself from majority of people on the planet because they really believe they're going to die and I don't I've lost that sense so it's interesting because the other person is mirroring you and is showing you that uh, wait a minute Zarathustra you still have a body you're still on this planet you're still operating within within this planet rules and laws and you're as long as you want to be in relationship with people around you you're gonna have to have compassion and understanding uh, for their concerns you can't be numb to that or indifferent to it even if within inside you maybe you've numb you become numb or you're indifferent to these cons concerns but uh, in some respect of reality that's not the case it's very serious for for a lot of people so um, you got to be compassionate so I really had to listen to their concerns uh, even though it wasn't my concern at all because at no moment I felt like we're going to die or we're going to terminate. We did get, we were in some dangerous situations but d deep inside me I was like everything is going to work out as everything always works out. But you can't expect that from other people. So I understand that. I get it. You know something does happen when you begin to truly 100% separate yourself from your body, you separate yourself from your mind, and you separate yourself from your emotions. Something does happen when you do this work. Because you realize that when you do the work regularly and you're paying attention, you're, you're very attentive to it, you're really looking because you're doing self-work, you cannot be your body. It's impossible. You cannot be your mind or your emotions because they come and go. Everything is coming and go. Everything is changing. 
your body is constantly changing for the better or for the worse. Or maybe in a stable uh, state for a short period of time. Your mind is always traveling. Your thoughts traveling through your mind all the time. Your emotions come and they go. You don't always have the same emotion. You're not always happy or you're not always depressed. So what happens is that you are in this place that is not touched and it's witnessing. So there must be, when you start paying attention, there must be something that is not moving. Something is like this. Oh. Something's in this position inside you all the time. Someone, something, some entity, some being, whatever name you want to call it, is like this. 24-7 seven days a week, 365 days a year, something inside you is like this. That part does not change. That part is the witness. It's witnessing what's changing. It can witness thoughts come and go. It's witnessing emotions come and go. And it's witnessing the meat, the body, is getting old. When you bring your attention to that part and you start identifying with the witness, which is you, the more you bring your attention to this part, the more you focus on this part of yourself, the more you realize what's the only thing which is real is that which doesn't change. So your attention for the first time in your life goes to the changeless, a permanent place. Something's permanently here that does not change. It doesn't get old, it doesn't get evolved, it's not bombarded by the mind, it's not emotional, it cannot be manipulated. It's something which is here all the time. And that's you. That's the real yourself. And as your attention goes into that place and you begin to discover that part, the Atma, they call it in the Sanskrit, is your soul, it's your being, it's your higher self, it's God, whatever name you want to put to it. The more your attention comes to this part, the more you begin to see the world that is changing, including your thoughts, your emotions, and your body, you begin to see that they're not real. You begin to see the politics of the world, the concerns of the world, the world you're observing is not real. It's not even there. It becomes imagery because you're now discovering what is real. And what is real is that which doesn't change. Anything that changes is not real. The real is that which doesn't change, that which doesn't come and go. And that's what the spiritual seeker is looking for. All spiritual seekers, no matter where they come from, what kind of tradition they come from, what guru they have, what religion they practice. Every single spiritual uh, seeker on this planet 
is looking for that. They're not aware of it. They may have never heard of it, but that's what they're looking for. Because that's where you find ultimate happiness. That's where you find peace, silence. Within yourself, in this place, that is not changing. And that's where you see suffering does not exist. You cannot suffer. Suffering becomes non-existing. Okay? Once you discover this place inside yourself, the mind can suffer. I witnessed my mind in past few days on this trip, being with some other people. I could just see where the mind wants to go. I could hear the thoughts. There were moments that the mind gets frustrated. But that has nothing to do with me. Because I'm not my mind. I'm not my thoughts. If I was my thoughts, if I was my mind, I would have been in trouble. Because the mind goes to so many different places. But once you start to witness and observe your mind, and stay still in your home, then it doesn't matter where your mind goes. First of all, it can't go very far, because as soon as it goes very far, you're going to come back home. Secondly, it will go to all these places, but when you remember that it's the mind that's going in all these places, then you're back into the center again, and everything is quiet. I see the challenge of many people and many seekers and some of you because you really believe that this world you're living in, you really believe it's real. And all your life experiences up to this point have been indicating in that direction. You have no reason to believe that this world is not real. You have no reason to believe that. And that's where the source of your suffering is, because this world is not real. And that's what people go out there and fight for it. They kill for it. They go to war. They kill other people. They kill their brothers, sisters. They fight in the family over something which doesn't exist, over something which is not real. It appears to be real. It only looks like real. And you would not know that. You, there's no way for you to know that it's not real until your attention is pushed in, in, inside to look for that which doesn't change. Otherwise, these are words. I can sit down here and tell you all day long that the world is not real. It doesn't make any sense to you. Because you have to discover what is real first. And that's a part of my goal. When we do this academy, the idea and what I do, whether I'm working with you on private session, if it's a life training program or it's a group situation, we, I, I always do the same thing. Always. Always is to take you inwards to force you to switch your mind inside to keep your mind on that which doesn't change. That which doesn't change. What is it that doesn't change? And when you go inwards and you bring your attention and you look inside and you bring your attention to the source 
of your thoughts, then everything becomes quiet. Everything becomes silent. You bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts. And then everything is still. Everything becomes still. There's no movement any longer. It's absolutely become still. Because this teaching is not about more concepts. It's not about doing something. It's not about learning another technique to manifest something, to create a reality for yourself. We're not learning that. Or at least we're not learning it in this way. We're learning to go beyond the world of thoughts into silence, into nothingness. There is nothing and it's silent. And that's where you tap into the bliss and the love of God. That's where we come to the union of oneness with God. And in that union of oneness with God, in this silence, there is no me and there is no God. Because they both disappear into the one. Oneness is not enough. Oneness is a concept. Oneness against what? You're one against what? There has to still be a duality. You cannot be one and know it. Because if you're one and you're knowing it, then you're comparing it to something else. Where I'm inviting you to come with me and to discover for yourself there is not one or two, there is not you and God, there is nothing. It all disappears. Because there is nothing to compare it against. And that's where, when we do this work, that's how the healing happens. People think that I have the power of healing them. But that's not true. I don't have the power to heal anything or anyone. It's not my power. It's the fact that you're willing to dive into the silence. So you give me a chance to direct you back into your inner silence. So you fall into silence. You become absolutely still and quiet and there's no mind then you are one with God. And that's where the healing happens. That's where the love comes. That's where the joy comes. That's where liberation comes. That's how you get liberated. You free yourself. Sometimes the healing is physical. Sometimes the healing is emotional or spiritual or mental. But it all comes from the source of yourself. It all comes from the source. And there's only one source. There's no different sources. And the source is inside yourself. It's within yourself. How cool is that? Isn't that like amazing? That in fact... You don't need to go anywhere and you really don't have to do anything to get it because it's already inside you. All you have to do is pay attention to it. It can't be any easier than that. It's the direct way. That's the direct experience of your 5D quantum awareness. 
a direct experience directly without any kind of zigzagging and exiting and going into anything else directly you reconnect and connect with who you are the truth of who you are and you enter into the world of wisdom and direct knowledge within yourself it's here right now nowhere else and that makes it clear that you are who you're looking for you are who you're looking for the what the what you're looking for all your life is really you it's inside yourself but you can't get to it with the mind you have to go beyond the mind and that's where a lot of the spiritual teachings come short because they're giving you they're teaching you concepts it's another concept it's an idea it doesn't work it doesn't bring peace it doesn't make you happier it doesn't make you silent because it still requires a level of mind activity that the mind has to work on something in order to get to who you are to get to you who are you are who you are mind is not needed we have to go beyond the mind And immediately you experience the juice, the joy, the love, the power, the silence. And immediately you realize in this place, when you're sitting and you're not thinking, that there is not even death. The concept of death, that's a concept. It doesn't even exist. That death you die how can you die where would you go you have to be born in order to die but you weren't born you always been here where are you going to go I am is always I am now when I am something yes I can die so if I become a human being and I am a human being then I can die but if I don't become something and I stay in my center then who is going to be born and who's going to die it, it becomes a concept it's not real any longer and I invite you to investigate this I'm not saying this to you that you just say oh wow great Zarathustra said some nice things I really like it no I'm not saying these things for you to agree with me. I don't care. I don't give a shit if you agree with me or not. I don't give a shit if you agree with anything I say or you don't. What I really want is for you to investigate it yourself. I want you to come and share this space with me. Come to this place so we can both hang out in this place I want to share this space because it's limited unlimited you can dive into this place and be free which is beyond death and and birth it's silence right now that that's why and I'm gonna give you the clue when we do meditate together and some of you come and tell me you know what it's different to be with you because you're transmitting this thing I can't do it on my own okay and that's not even true because you don't know what you are and you have no idea who you are yes there is the power of transmission I agree with it but the power of transmission is not personal it's not me transmitting this power to you because it's not a person the transmission the power of transmission is here it's between us it's within yourself it's surrounding you it's dancing around you 
It's playing around you. It's kissing you. It's touching you. The power of transmission, it's here. You have to be here to get it. You can't be anywhere else. So if you're in a concept of life and death, and you're going to die, and this is going to happen, and COVID-19 is going to come and wipe you out, and blah, 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 then you are not here. You're in a concept. If your mind is busy with U.S. presidency or who's going to win the election, then you're not in silence. You're involved with the world. Gautama Buddha, Jesus Christ, Moses, Muhammad, I don't know, anyone who received, arrived at full enlightenment, Krishna, they didn't care about who's in the power, who's running the world, what are the politics of the world. They didn't care about any of that. They discovered the kingdom of heaven within themselves. They were true to their selves. And that was their main mission, to find peace inside yourself. In the midst of all this chaotic world, and everything is happening, for me, everything is peaceful. It's always quiet. It doesn't matter what happens in the world. Here is always quiet. Here is always peaceful. And maybe that's what you call the power of transmission, because you encounter someone, you come across somebody, whomever this person is, and I'm not saying me, and you're encountering someone who has discovered themselves. And yes, of course, it feels good to be around them because they're emanating that and they're reflecting back that silence to you. So you feel good. But I'm telling you, as I've said it before, what you're looking for is inside yourself. Bring your attention inwards and find peace. And find that you weren't born. And find that you will never die. And all your worries and, and anxiety or fear, they all immediately disappear. They're not there anymore. They disappear. So if fear, worry, anxiety comes and goes, then how real is it? How real is it? If it comes and goes. Because if your fear, worry, anxiety is real, it must be there all the time. But it's not. But what is there all the time? Why don't you ex ex examine what's there all the time for you? Look inside. Do it right now. Take a look. Don't take my word. I want you to look inside. What's there inside you all the time? Take a look. Just for one moment, take a look inside. Switch your attention inwards and see what's there all the time. You close your eyes, you bring your attention inwards, you go to the source of your thoughts, and you enter into silence. Silence is always here. Inner peace is always here. And if you don't relate it to the events of the world, if you don't attach it to the events of the world, then you will see that you're always in inner peace. 
if you don't attach it to your f news of from your family, if you don't attach it to the news of your city, if you don't attach it to something, inner peace is always here. So look for that. Seek, seek that. Look for it. Don't settle down for a little crumbs here and there. Look for the big deal. Put the big one inside. Don't be complacent. If things are a little bit going your way and you're happy, that's not enough. Look for that which is permanent inside you. Always. It has to be quiet. Always. And still. Look for that one. Thank you very much for joining me. I went overboard. I went 20 minutes above that. Uh, what I've announced that I'm going to talk. We're going to meet next Wednesday, same time. Inshallah, God willing. Um, some of you contacted me regarding my life training program. And I will get back with you. I'm sorry I was gone. And uh, <laughs> I haven't checked any messages or anything for the time I was gone. Actually, for about seven days, I didn't even have my phone on. And that was great. And I didn't take many photos because I didn't take my phone with me. And that was such an amazing revelation, not having the phone with you. So, But I will get back with you uh, regarding uh, the life training program. Uh, otherwise, I... This recording will be recorded. It will be immediately on Facebook and a, a uh, edited version of it will be mailed to you in next few days. Also, uh, we have a podcast and this, re the, this recording is going to be on my podcast as well. And this video is going to be on YouTube. Uh, so you have so many different ways to check it out and watch it again. Um, all of my pages are, uh, the name of my pages are Zaratustra 5D. That's my Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and um, my podcast. I look forward to seeing you next week, sending you lots of love and light. Feel free to write to me. Uh, my email address is info at Zaratustra.tv. I look forward to connecting with you. God bless you and thank you for joining me. Namaste.